finding the right super shoe as an everyday runner is very hard. There are so many shoes out there now, these super shoes with these carbon plates and big stack heights, it's all very confusing. But in this video, I'm gonna tell you which is the best super shoe for the everyday runner. What is up everybody and welcome to 40 Runs and Super Shoe HQ here at Broxbourne, Hertfordshire in the UK. Where are you in the world? Let me know in those comments and now this is the big question of the day before we get into anything else. How do you define a super shoe? Okay, right, so what is a super shoe? Uh, how do you define it? I think it's a, it's a, a gray area now because um, in the early days, <laughs> uh, it was literally sat anything with a carbon plate because carbon plates in running shoes were like a new thing, fashionable and all this sort of stuff. Then they started pumping up the stack heights, um, for example, um, and then they started adding these super critical foams to the shoes and making them lighter and doing all sorts of cool stuff with them. And then every single manufacturer started chucking in shoes into that sector. And then they broke it down even more. Oh, let me get it here. Now you've got 5K super shoes or 10K super shoes. You've got marathon super shoes. You've got elite super shoes. And it's really, really confusing. But for me, a super shoe is the following. It's a racing shoe that's got obviously a carbon plate or some form of plate in it with a reasonable amount of stack in the heel and at the forefoot with some form of, you know, pimped up, super duper uh, foam, let's call it. But I think that the, the key for a super shoe for me is, is it something that you're going to put on on race day or for that big event, whatever it is, whether it's your first park run or your first marathon or you are chasing a PB. But that shoe needs to be strapped onto your feet, make you feel awesome and get you across that finish line as fast as you can. So that's how I define a super shoe. And that's why I said at the front end, I'm really interested to know from you what defines a super shoe. Now we've established that, let's move on to the most important part of this video, which is finding the best super shoe for the everyday runner. Now I'm very lucky at 40 Runs, we've got millions of shoes here. Um, and the shoes I'm gonna go through uh, today are the shoes in my collection. And I use the word collection uh, deliberately. Um, some of the shoes I'm using less uh, than I was previously, some of the shoes I've used more, some of the shoes we run marathons in, some of the shoes we run 10Ks in, and all that sort of stuff, right? Then we've got a real good mix here of the shoes. Now, for a disclaimer, mm, uh, the shoes have either been sent to me or I purchased, okay? That's not going to impact my uh, honest and open opinions of the shoes, uh, but it's just worth knowing at the front end that some of the shoes that I'm going to be talking about, I have received. Okay, right, so with that out of the way, we're gonna go through each shoe, right, in terms of the super shoes that I own, and we're gonna whittle it down, all the way down to the end of the video, like I said at the start, you're gonna have the best running shoe, super shoe, for the everyday runner. Okay, so first up, we've got the Vaporfly 2. We do have the Vaporfly 3 coming, by the way, but the reason I've included the Vaporfly 2 because you can get this cheaper than the Vaporfly 3. So we've got Zoom X in the shoe, full length carbon plate. This was like the, the daddy of, of the shoe, um, super shoe arena. We've got a really nice uh, upper, although version three is better, I'll come on to that. Lightweight, fast, and it just makes you feel awesome. Uh, the outsole's okay, it's not brilliant, but it does the job. But this shoe for me is an absolute weapon of mass destruction. So for me, this shoe uh, is perfectly suited for that 10K and moving into the half marathon area. Fast 5K as well you can do in this shoe. But it does have, I would say, some restrictions in terms of its use, which is why I don't think it is the best shoe or super shoe for the everyday runner. Okay, coming on to our next super shoe uh, is an offering from Puma. This is the uh, DVA Nitro Elite 2. Uh, we've got Nitro Elite foam. We've got a new plate in the shoe. We've got Puma grip on the outside. We've got a mono mesh upper. This shoe, I think, is 170, 175 pounds. If I've got that wrong, I'll put something up on the screen saying that I've got it wrong. Uh, this is a reduced stack height. Uh, as well versus the other. So I think for memory it's about 36, but again, if I've got that wrong, I'll put it up on the screen. Um, 
But this thing is, I would say, hard to classify as a super shoe. I think this is a shoe that you would have in your rotation for up-tempo work. Yes, you could run it in a 10K. Yes, you could run it in a half marathon. But like I just showed you, I think the Vaporfly 2 is probably a better shout. And at the moment, you can get it cheaper as well. And that's why I struggle really to, to keep this in this super shoe arena. But I wanted to include it because I think for some people, it can give some of that super shoe awesomeness at the 5k 10k um distance but at a sort of better price as uh, like uh, and the reason i mentioned is because you can get version one which is very similar to this really cheap at the moment so that's why i've included the deviate nitro elite 2 but I, I struggle to see it as a super shoe let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree but this is not the best super shoe for the everyday runner Okay, staying with Puma, we've got this, the Forever Run, Full Run, I think it is. Um, now, I've only included this, and I want to do it very quickly on here, because this I do classes as a super shoe, because we've got Elite Foam, Nitro Elite Foam, we've got carbon plate in here, uh, and it is set up like a, a racing shoe. But this is really designed for the 5K, and that's, that's why I said at the start, we've gone the other extreme now with these super shoes, that the manufacturers like Puma are putting in super shoes in certain... Uh, sweet spots within our distances that we run this has got like nothing there in terms of that and the upper you're literally just strapped on to a carbon plate but this is not obviously the best super shoe for an everyday runner this is you know not the best super shoe out there but at the 5k distance it's a very very interesting just shoe a very interesting shoe to think about for me personally uh i would probably send you more towards the um vaporfly 2 because it's cheaper this is 200 pounds Okay, next up, another new shoe, the Wave Rebellion Pro. Now, this has been getting a lot of love, this shoe. Now, you've got to watch your sizing, people. I'm going to put that straight out there. You need to go at least half a size up in this shoe. We've got two layers of foam. I think it's the uh, Energy Foam uh, they've got from Mizuno. We've got uh, the plate in here. You can see it sticking out there um and it's just oh, it's just an absolute machine obviously we've got high stack heights here they actually measure the stack height a different place to get this um legal for racing uh, we've got a very decent outsole on the shoe uh, the upper's awesome and this is this is a shoe that sort of feels between the vapor fly and the alpha fly because it's weird when you put it on like the alpha fly and you've got like this big uh slab of foam but it feels quick, it really does feel quick and it's lightweight and it just feels fast. This is a nice blend between the Vaporfly and the Alphafly, but here's the thing, it's very aggressive and I don't think that works for the everyday runner. As everyday runners, we don't want anything that's too aggressive. I don't necessarily feel like, well no, so let's turn that around. I think you've got to be very running very, very fast in this shoe to get the most out of it and that's why I don't think it is the best super shoe for the everyday runner. Right, okay, you might disagree with this, but I've included the Primex Strung. Now, you might go, forward, that's not a super shoe, but hear me out, okay? We've got energy rods, carbon plated energy rods. We've got over 40 mil of stack. Actually, 50 mil is the, is the amount, but this is illegal for elites. So you might say that's a bit strong putting it in, but I put it in because I think, as an everyday runner, actually this offers... Um, an interesting ride. But the biggest thing for this show is its price. It is ridiculously overpriced. But I've run it at the half marathon distance and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, it's a great training shoe as well uh, for marathon training, uh, putting that goal pace work in. But this is, a, this is a good shoe to ride in, really. It really is. And it really does hold pace well. Um, yes, it's, you know, it's high. You've got big stack height here. But it is a lot of fun to run in this shoe. Now, Primex 2, apparently, according to Thomas from Believe in the Run and uh, Kafuzi, is a very, 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 very good shoe. So let's see what happens there. But for me, I don't think the um, Primex Strung is a shoe, and Primex Strung 2 won't be a shoe for the everyday, super shoe for the everyday runner, simply because of the price. Okay, people, Speed Beast time, yes. Now, I wanted to include the Speed Beast because they, uh, guys at Sketches have stuck a big lump of um, Hyperburst Pro in this. We've got a plate in the shoe as well. We've got a fantastic upper on it. We've got a really good Goodyear outsole on the shoe. It just feels great, really nice rockered shoe it is legal i think from memory i think it just comes in at 40 mil in terms of the stack height um is this the best uh super shoe for the everyday runner no because i don't think it's outright speed it's outright fast um that you could probably get out of the shoes that we're going to talk about later this is a lot of fun to run in okay this is a, a lot of fun to run in um 
it just does it just does those sort of half marathon distances really really well and, and gives a smile on your face while you're running about of it it's pretty effortless there's nothing here that's going to you know be so aggressive and, and whatnot it's just it's just great it's wide enough and yeah and obviously it's got speed written on it and it's called speed beast but this is a great shoe it really really is it's not readily available which is another reason why i've said uh, marked it down as well but it's it's lacking that outright pace which is not designed i'll give you you know sketches credit they, they, they've said this is not you know this is a mid-pack shoe so but we're looking for the super shoe right so it's it's not outright in terms of pace it's not up there with some of the other shoes uh, and the availability of it does um sort of knock it down in terms of marking versus some of the other shoes but that said i really like it okay people we're near the end bear with me Sockney Elite, the Endorphin Elite, a, a monster of a shoe. Uh, we've got the new Power Run HG in it, full length plate underneath there. But I think you guys know who follow the channel, this shoe for me is not, is not designed for the everyday runner. It is an elite shoe. I am simply not fast enough to get the best out of this shoe. I ran 138 um, half marathon. Yeah, I could have gone faster, but at those paces, I still wasn't going fast enough to get the best out of this shoe. This is a phenomenal shoe, but it needs to be put in the right hands. And that's why it's not the best super shoe for the everyday runner. Oh, and the other reason, it's 289 pounds. Okay, Nike, we've got two shoes from Nike coming up. Now, I've got the Alpha Fly version one here. Version two, hopefully, again, if you follow the channel, I got rid of my version two because the arch was too much uh, for me. And there's another reason, which uh, basically I used the Adios Pro 3 too much. But I want to include version one because um, basically I was talking to my brother-in-law over dinner and he and all he does is run pretty much in Alpha Flies or Street Fly. And he was saying that for him, the version one is just the much better shoe versus version two. And you know what? I think he's right. So this is the first sort of monster super shoe for the marathon distance. Obviously, Kipchoge famously wears it. We've got version three coming. Big slab of Zoom X, carbon plate, and all these AirPods and stuff like that. This is a, a monster of a shoe. It really is a good shoe, version one. Uh, it is expensive, £279. So again, you know, I think about the price, and I think to myself, mm, is it over the top? But here's the thing. Version one, you can get discounted. We was looking at the dinner table last night, and you can get a pair of version one for about £180, which, in the scheme of things, for super shoes, is actually okay. Um, let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree. So I think version one is close, people, to the ultimate super shoe for the everyday runner. But I think you've got to be a bit careful with it. It might not be for everyone in terms of the stack height, you know, 40 mil and the Zoom X. It might not just be the, the right shoe for everybody, which is why it's not the best super shoe for the everyday runner. Okay, we're nearly there, and we've got the newest shoe, the Nike Next Percent 3 here. Um, close to the best super shoe for the everyday runner? I'm not even sure that is true. This is a good shoe. They've not ruined it from version 2, but at £235, you are better off getting version 2 at the moment. Uh, Zoom X is awesome. Carbon plate is awesome. The upper is amazing on this shoe. It really is a massive improvement. Um, the rocks that you... No, you don't get them for free. Um, but you, they've shaved weight underneath, and the outsole uh, is a big improvement as well. Overall, the shoe is good. Uh, obviously, getting the white colourway is not so good because you do ruin them, but it is a running shoe and you need to run in it, people. Um, but version 3, it, yeah, it's not the best super shoe for the everyday runner. £235. Okay, yeah, we, we're not over the top in terms of, like, the Saucony Elite. We're not up there. But I just think there is other shoes, and I'm coming on to them in just a sec, that actually offer something better for the everyday runner. Right, okay, so... Here we go, and if you've made it to this part of the video, well done, because I'm now gonna tell you the best shoe, super shoe, for the everyday runner. Okay, and I'm gonna cheat, because there's actually two, and you've probably guessed it. We've got the Adios Pro 3, and the Socking Endorphin Pro 3. Okay, let's talk about them quickly individually. The Adios Pro 3 is phenomenal. We've got energy rods in here. We've got, I never forget, is it Con yeah, Continental Rubber? I always call it Goodyear Rubber. Uh, we've got for 39 mm Stack Light Strike Pro, uh, fits true to size, and you can get these shoes for about £154, people. Yes, now I know version 4 is coming, but I think it's going to be a mild update to the upper. Uh, I may be wrong on that, but I don't think they're going to change this winning formula too much. Then we've got 39 and a bit 
uh, stack height of Power Run PB in the Socket Endorphin Pro with a very breathable upper, carbon plate as well, speed roll technology which is helping you with that heel to toe transitions. Weight wise, I think they're about the same. I can't remember the exact uh, figure, but I think they're around about the same. But there is a reason why, apart from the price, this is you can pick these up for between 175 and 165 at the moment in the UK. And by the way, version 4 looks very good. I think that's going to go power run HG. But the real reason that these two, apart from the price, offer um, the best solution for the everyday run in terms of super shoe is the fact that you can run these in everything. If you've got to spend north of 170 pounds, I know I said this 154, but go with me on this. You want something that's going to do everything, okay? You're going to want a carbon plate of some degree, I guess. You're going to want some sort of super foam. You're going to want some sort of racy upper. You're going to want a fit that's going to, you know, lock you down and make you feel confident on that start line. You're going to want an outsole that when you're running through those paper cups or the sticky gel on the ground that's been left in that marathon that you ain't going to slide over. You want something that's going to grip the ground if your race is wet. You're going to want something that's going to make you feel awesome on race day. And also, I think you're going to want something that is a stable platform and feel like you can carry speed over the distance that you're running. And for me, that's what makes, like I said, a super shoe for the everyday runner. All those ingredients, you put them all together and I think actually you come out with these two shoes. And this now comes down to personal preference, I believe. You've got the Adios Pro 3, which just works for me. It just does. Uh, I just felt great with it in Amsterdam. Uh, my legs didn't feel beaten up afterwards. You can train in this thing. You can run some of your long runs in it. Obviously, you want to try and limit the use of it, but you can literally do some of those uh, uh, goal pace work in it. You can take this to a 5K race and run hard in it. You can do a good quick 10K time in this thing. Uh, you can do a quick half. I did it in the big half in a pair of these. Um, so it literally can do everything and it's the same with the Pro, the Endorphin Pro 3 you can literally do everything you can train in this thing you can do your 5Ks, 10Ks, half marathons and it's going to get you across the line with a smile on your face and hopefully somewhere near that time that you're aiming for and they're both not badly priced so I think that's it people we're going to leave the video there agree, disagree let me know in the comments I think the best super shoe or super shoes for the everyday runner is something that's called Pro 3.